All right, fighthype.com, Sean Zatel here with the great Bob Arum, uh, here tonight for, for what should be a good fight between Richard Comey and Jackson Mariñez. Bob, I know we got the, the undisputed lightweight champion, Tiafimo Lopez, walking around. Any update on that fight with George Cambosis? Have you guys had a chance to, to settle some terms maybe over the weekend thus no, far? No, no, we, we're not, we're past that. In other words, it looks like we're gonna go to first bit and because it's a mandatory and under the rules, Whoever has the big highest bid allocates 65% to the champion, 35% to the challenge. And that's where we're headed. And that's what these championship rules are designed to do to resolve those impasses. Do you expect top rank to win that first bid? We, either we do or we don't. We can either win or lose <laughs> if we lose it then somebody else will do the fight. That's the way of the world. I mean, that's the way it works. That's the way it should work. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, again, uh, we've made the best offer we can to Tiafimo. If he is not satisfied with that offer, we, because he wasn't, I mean, his, his manager was pretty much uh, north of that, we didn't bother closing with the challenger. But again, that's what these purse bids are designed to do. You know, it, it's not the end of the world. If Tiafimo has a fight on another platform, he comes back to top rank in ESPN, we have a three and a half year contract left with him. So there's no animosity. I mean, everybody likes in boxing to you know, say this and say that. But again, he's looking the best for him, and good luck. What, what, do you, what do you react to that Eddie Hearn is looking to possibly win that purse bid? Well, <laughs> if that's the case, that's the case. Again, I think it would be very ill-advised of Eddie to put a bid in, but if he wants to, he's free to do it. He's a licensed promoter. So th that doesn't uh, create problems for trying to make Joshua Fury, right? There's well, no animosity. I, I think you ought to ask Eddie that question. But on your end, you ought to no ask words. Eddie that question. Spe speaking of, well, to stay on Tiafimo for a moment, would that be more of a marquee fight under normal circumstances if, if you were able to have taken that fight to Australia? Yeah, of course, and, yeah. of course. It would have been a different ball game. It, it, from what I heard, it would be a major fight in Australia. But there's a pandemic in Australia. And there's a, well, there's less of a pandemic than it is here, but they're very careful there. That's why they've been able to control the virus. And so if you go in there, you got to spend 14 days in a hotel room that the government gives you, and you can't exercise and so forth. Then you got to start training. That's not possible. Same problem in Japan. You no, know, again, I'm not blaming these countries or anything. It is what it is. You know, <laughs> Tiafimo would, you know, he'd be favored to get past Cambosis, you know, maybe even by a knockout. Saying yeah. he gets through that, what, what is the fight you like at lightweight, Bob? I know last time I asked you this in November, you liked the Ryan Garcia fight. I like that number one. I like number two, uh, Tank Davis. I think those are good, two good fights. Those are marquee fights. And the later we do it in the year, the more chance things are back, back to normal or getting back to normal. We can do a gate and we can probably do it on pay-per-view. So again, this fight, you know, I don't want to diminish Cambos, but because he's fought for us, he's a gallant kid, he's a nice kid, but he's not elite. I mean, he's a, and you know and I know that if that, once that fight is made, uh, Lopez will be a 25 to 30 to one favorite. Uh, we're trying in top rank. Which says more about Lopez than Cambosis, right? Yeah, there's yeah. No, no, yeah. no knock on either of them. Right. I mean, Cambosis is a dead game guy, and I enjoy him. And he's, a, I, We had him in a couple of fights. And, you know, he gives his all, but he's not Tiafimo Lopez. Hmm? He might like to exchange too much for his own good against Well, the, you the, know, <laughs> that, I mean, I don't want to, you know, again. Right. I mean, you know, but, the, you know, he's not like a fall down over the hill bum. He's not. Mm -hmm. He's a decent fighter. 
who's gutty, but he is not the proper match for Lopez. He's overmatched fighting Lopez. Were you able to make any headway in talks with Oscar about a, a down the line fight with Ryan and Tia Fimo, like a, a timeline or? Well, I you think, know, I think uh, according to Oscar, they would like to give Ryan uh, a couple of fi easier fights before they put him in with Lopez. Okay, and and you know, on to the Tank Davis fight. LRB and uh, Tank's team obviously believe they got a big star in Davis, just as you feel with Lopez. Is that a 50-50 fight? For what 50 50 uh, what, odds? Lopez and Tank they, and, uh, 50 50 money wise. I no, mean, well, I, again, yeah. I would be I, since I haven't even started talking to them, right? It would be silly to put out numbers. With uh, last time we spoke in November, too, you said what Tiafimo would go on to say about Devin Haney you want to see something happen first before yeah, making that. I mean, Devin Haney could very well be, but he hasn't shown that in his fight. They've done great publicity for him. His father is a master of promotion. I say that with all due respect, you know. Mm -hmm. Father seems like an engaging, nice fellow. But again, selling it is going to be very, very difficult at this point. Down the line, you know, maybe. Does Len uh, Tia Fimo said you should fight a top 10 lightweight first. Does, does Tia Fimo, does a, a Linares fit the bill? As, as Linares a, would be perfect as a gatekeeper for any of these guys. Is that enough to suffice a, a fight with Tia Fimo? Well, you it, beat well it would certainly be a step forward.